There was an old man lived under the hill. If he ain't moved away, he's a living there still. Sing fi, diddle I, diddle I, fi, diddle I, diddle I day. Well, he hitched up his horse and he went out to plow. And how he got around, I don't know how. Sing fi, diddle I, diddle I, fi, diddle I, diddle I day. Well, the devil, he come to the man at his gate, says, one of your family I'm going to take. Sing fi, diddle I, diddle I, fi, diddle I, diddle I day. Well, the old man cried, I am undone. He's come to take my oldest son. Sing fi, diddle I, diddle I, fi, diddle I, diddle I day. Well, it ain't your son that I want today, but the old scolding woman I'll take away. Sing fi, diddle I, diddle I, fi, diddle I, diddle I day. Take her on, Mr. Devil, with the joy of my heart, and I hope to God that you never shall part. Sing fi, diddle I, diddle I, fi, diddle I, diddle I day. So he put her up in a old toe sack and he looked like a camel with a hump on its back. Sing fi, diddle I, diddle I, fi, diddle I, diddle I day. Well, he toted her down to the forks of the road. Says, get down, old lady, or a hell of a load. Sing fi, diddle I, diddle I, fi, diddle I, diddle I day. Then he carried her on to the gates of hell, says, punch up the far boy, scarch her well. Fi, diddle, I, diddle, I, fi, diddle, I, diddle, I, day. Along come a little devil a dragging up a chain. She picked up a hatchet and she hacked out its brain, saying, fi, diddle, I, diddle, I, fi, diddle, I, diddle, I, day. Another little smoke devil come a climbing up there. She up with her foot and she kicked it in the fire. Sing fi, diddle I, diddle I, fi, diddle I, diddle I day. Five more little devils come a scooting down the wall. Says, take her back, pal, before she kills us all. Fi, diddle I, diddle I, fi, diddle I, diddle I day. It's what to do with her, I cannot tell. She ain't fit for heaven and she won't do for hell. Sing fi, diddle I, diddle I, fi, diddle I, diddle I day. So one day the old man were a peeping through the crack and he spied the old devil come a wagging her back. Sing fi, diddle I, diddle I, fi, diddle I, diddle I day. Sure's your wife, she's sounding well. I'll tell you what's more, she's tore up hell. Sing fi, diddle I, diddle I, fi, diddle I, diddle I day. So I've been the devil about all of my life, but I've never been in hell till I met your wife. Sing fi, diddle I, diddle I, fi, diddle I, diddle I day. She is seven years ago and then seven are coming back. She chawed on the backer that she left in the crack. Sing fi, diddle I, diddle I, fi, diddle I, diddle I day. One day the old man was sick in the bed. She up with a butter stick and paddled his head. Sing fi, diddle I, diddle I, fi, diddle I, diddle I day. Well, the old man cried, I surely am cursed. She been down to hell, come back worse. Sing fi, diddle I, diddle I, fi, diddle I, diddle I day. Well, the man went skipping on over the hill. Says, if the devil won't have her, be damned if I will. Fi, diddle I, diddle I, fi, diddle I, diddle I day. I'll tell you what a woman can do. She can outdo the devil and her old man too. Sing fi, diddle I, diddle I, fi, diddle I, diddle I day. Well, this shows that the women has advantage of the men. They can go down to hell and come back again. Sing fi, diddle I, diddle I, fi, diddle I, diddle I day.
Well, there was a little family lived back in the country, and there was a daddy and mama, a little girl and a little boy in the family. The little boy was the oldest. One day the daddy said, I'm going to send you to the store. And he said, now you run and get a package for me, and you come back, and I'll let you uh, play with uh, our pet. Now, they had an unusual pet. It was a little old monkey with a little old ringy tail and they had a big time with. And I don't know where it come from and how it got there, but that was their pet. And uh, the little boy, he had to start out to the store. So he had to go through the woods walking. He went through the woods and across the fields, and he's coming by a trail where a branch, that's a brook, was on one side of the path. And some big bushes on the other one, and he, on the other side. And as he went by, the bushes went to shaking. He heard something go, ah, I'm big and I'm bad. And I love deep little boys. Up. I'm going to eat you up. Rawr! Out of the bushes jumped a big old grizzly bear and just picked the boy up and swallowed him one bite. Well, later a while and he didn't come home, the daddy sent the little girl to the store. Said, now you bring my package home. Said, I'll let you play. Well, the little girl was going along the trail toward the store and she come by them big bushes and they went to shake it. She stopped and listened to something. Went, Rawr! I'm big and I'm bad. Now I eat little boy up. I love to eat little girls so I'm going to eat you up. Rawr! Out of the bushes jumped that big old grizzly bear and just picked her up by the heels and swallowed her in one big swallow. Well, when she didn't come home, the daddy's getting mad. He said, them youngins is awful playing somewhere. I said, now, wife, you go get my package and don't you stop and gossip. No, we're on the way. Bring it on back to me. Well, she started along the trail just to singing, looking at the birds in the skies and the butterflies flying around. And she's come by that part of the trail where the branch was on one side of it and the bushes on the other, and it went shaking. And something went, ah, I'm big and I'm bad. I had a little boy up. And I had a little girl up. And I loved eat mommies up. And I'm going to eat you up. Ah! Out of the bushes jumped that big old grizzly bar and picked that mammy up by her heels and just swallowed her in one great old big gulp, maybe two swallows. Well, when she didn't come back, finally the daddy decided he better go himself. So he started back to the store. So he started off to the store by himself. He is going along, come to that trail. Now, he's bigger than the rest of them. He come to them bushes only they got shaking. He stopped and listened. Something went... Ah, I'm big and I'm bad. And I eat little boy up. And I eat little girl up. And I eat your mommy up. And I love to eat your daddy up. And I'm going to eat you up. Ah, and out of the bushes jumped that big old grizzly bear and grabbed up the daddy and swallowed him in one or two bites. He's gone. Well, I didn't leave nobody at the house except the monkey. And after a while, he thought he was going to starve to death, so he went out to winter and went through the woods hunting bugs and caterpillars to eat and st berries and stuff like that. And it happened to come along part of the trail where the bushes was, and they went to shaking. It stopped and listened to something, and I went, I'm big and I'm bad. And I ate little boy up. And I ate little girl up. And I ate your mammy up. And I ate your pappy up. And I love monkey meat. And I love to eat monkeys up. Now I'm going to eat you up. Ah! Out of the bushes jumped that big old grizzly bear, and that little old monkey just cleaned right up in the top of a big old tree growing right there by the trail there, and just got up there and went slapping its knees of life in it, that old bear. That bear so mad, he's going, rawr, rawr, I'm going to eat you up, I love my meat. Rawr, rawr. And it got to climbing up that tree and got a little higher and just a roaring as it went, and finally got on a limb, it was a little too weak, and it snapped. And down through the tree come the bear. It just is hitting limbs right and left, and leaves are flying up there as it went down. Finally, it hit the ground so hard, it, right on a rock, and it broke its backbone and killed him dead at four o'clock. When it did, it spread his belly wide open up there. About that time, a little girl jumped out of his belly and said, Tee hee, I'm out. Right behind her come a little boy and said, Tee hee, I'm out. Right behind him come the mom, and she said, Tee hee, I'm out. Right behind her come the daddy. He had to push on the rib cage to push himself up and out. And he said, Tee hee, I'm out. And about that time, that little monkey's up there in the tree, just a life in life, and said, Tee hee, I never got in to get out. 
I guess they lived happy ever after that. I don't know. Never heard no more about them. And you hit her clothes and shoes Hang down your head, Tom Dooley Oh, bow your head and cry You kill for Laurie Foster You know you're bound to die At my trial at Wilkesburg And what do you reckon they done? They bound me over to Statesville And there's where I'll be hung what my pappy told me is about to come to pass Drinking liquor and bad women would be my run at last Hang down your head, Tom Dooley Oh, bow your head and cry You kill for Laurie Foster and you know you're bound to die In this world and one more Where do you reckon I'll be? Way down yonder in a holler, a hanging from a wide oak tree. Hand me down my fiddle, I'll play it all I please. For at this time tomorrow, it'll be of no use to me. Hang down your head, Tom Dooley. Hang down your head and cry. Kill for Laurie Foster, and you know you're bound to die. They were two sisters that lived back up in the mountains. The oldest one's name was Mary, and the youngest one's name was Kate. Now, Mary was a nice-looking woman, a good hard worker, but she was awful jealous of her younger sister, Katie, who was just beautiful. Katie had long blonde hair and just a wonderful figure and form, and she had a nice personality that everybody loved, and I guess Mary was sort of jealous of that, too. Kate had a lot of friends and a lot of fellers come a courting her, one of them asked her to marry him, and she accepted. She fell in love with him, and he gave her a diamond engagement ring to wear that just shined and sparkled and set her beauty off more than ever. And old oh, Mary was so mad because she thought that rock was the prettiest thing in the whole wide world. She'd even beg Katie to let her wear it, but Kate, although she had a good personality, did have good sense, too. And so their mother came to stay with them until the wedding, and she fixed a... Uh, a wedding gown for Mary to, for Katie to wear. It was real beautiful, all trimmed in lace and had a pretty little cap on top and a veil in front and a big long trail that drug the ground behind. And So on the wedding day, everybody showed up at the church house. Everybody, that is, except for Katie's uh, bridegroom, her fiancé. They waited a while and he never showed up, and finally... His mother and one of his sisters went home to see what happened. Now, all this happened back in the wagon days, back about a hundred years ago when people had to walk where they went or either ride horses or in wagons. And So uh, the boyfriend's mother and sister went to see if they could find him, and his wedding clothes were laying on the bed, but there weren't no sign of him. And when they went to the barn, they found the horse there, but no sign of the boy. And so a search went on for weeks, and they hunted for him and got a posse up, and not one sketch could they find of whatever happened to him. Some people thought that he got cold feet and run away at the last, and others thought that maybe something happened to him, and yet others thought that Katie was so beautiful that no boy would leave her before he had uh, uh, had some time with her. So nobody really knew. Some people thought maybe Murray had something to do with him getting gone, but 
they couldn't prove that either. So whatever the reason and uh, whatever she had done or hadn't done, Mary, uh, I guess, thought that Katie wouldn't want anything to remind her of her boyfriend and that she'd wind up with that engagement ring, that diamond engagement ring. But although Katie uh, was in sorrow and missed him and cried and cried about it, she would never take that ring off her finger. And so they stayed up in the mountains in their home uh, all by themselves where they worked a garden, and, and it was kind of isolated. And one morning, Kate called, or Mary rather, called Katie down for breakfast. And when she didn't come, Mary went to see what happened. And there she found Kate laying in the bed, dead. So a casket was um, constructed for Kate's body, and her uh, form was laid out. And they dressed her in the wedding gown that she'd meant to get married in. And back in those days, they had setting ups or wakes for family friends would come from miles around to the home and somebody would sit up with the dead all night. Well, that evening when everybody was gathered around, they said that Kate still looked as beautiful in death as she had in life and that Mary walked over to the casket and put her hand inside. Now, some of the people thought that, well, she was sorry for the way she'd treated Katie and was just, it was her way of uh, making up to her, but when her hand came out of the casket, that ring was in it and she slipped it in her apron pocket. Well, the folks didn't want to start any trouble. They thought it was just no use, and Kate dead and all, and so they let it go. Next day, Katie was buried. <clears throat> well, time went by, and the mother, she went back to live with uh, another one of their brothers, I believe, and Mary stayed by herself there at that home back up in the holler, and time went by, and it was up in the fall of the year, and the leaves were drying and blowing off the trees. It, a storm built up all evening one day, and about dark it broke across the mountains, and it just rained and lightning and thundered to beat the band. And Mary was sitting at home by herself. It was after night, and had a little oil lamp to see by, and maybe some far in the far place. She was sewing when she heard somebody come to the door. Well, she thought, who could be up here? It was the end of an old dirt trail at, at their house. She didn't know who it could be, but she went to look. There's a girl outside getting wet in the elements, and she said, you better come in and dry off. You'll catch pneumonia. And the girl come in. Mary shut the door behind her and buttoned it and went to lead her down the hall. Well, she wasn't the best person in the world, but in those days it was sort of an unwritten law or rule that you uh, gave people a place to stay at night, and you'd be good to them. The hosts would always be good to their guests. Now, they might knock them on the head the next day after they got down the road a little ways, but while they were with them, they were their guests, and they treated them nice. So Mary went to lead the girl down the hall, and as she did, she thought, well, I've seen this girl somewhere before. I'm going to check it out. And she turned around to get a little better look, and the wind blew the hair out of the girl's face, and Mary looked, and it was Katie. Katie was still, looked like one in a thousand, but it wasn't the same thousand as it used to be. And her blonde hair that was so pretty, it all swiveled up and was blowing out in big bunches. Where her eyes had been, there were just two dark holes with little red lights back in their skull and little white tags of skin hanging over the bone around her eyes, just quivering whenever the wind would shake them. One side of her face had all rotted away, and you could see the jawbone and, the, and part of the tongue that was left and the teeth. And, you know, where she came back from the grave, it couldn't smell too good because everything that's buried goes back to Mother Nature. And those old wooden caskets would rot, and the worms in the earth would eat through them, and they would eat into the corpse. And they, the grave worms was all over that um, dress and on the side of her face where she'd come back the blowflies had got at her and left their maggots and they were swarming all over well it startled Mary just a little bit she thought well I better make my peace with Katie now and she didn't know what to say or what to think or how Katie could possibly speak but they said a voice come out of that frame when Mary said Katie said, Lord, have mercy. 
Where in this world have you been? Katie said, I've been in the cold grave. Oh, Katie, Mary said, whatever happened to that beautiful face of yours? It was so pretty. It moldered away in the cold clay. Well, Katie, she said, what in this world ever happened to that beautiful hair yarn? It used to shine like the morning sun on the mountaintop in the springtime. It's in the cold clay. Well, she looked at that dress that her mother had made and seen how moldered it was and the worms crawl, crawling all across it. She said, Katie, whatever this, this world happened to that beautiful dress Mammy made for you? It's in the cold clay. Well, she looked at her hands and the flesh had all wrapped off the bones, looked like claws ready to jump out and grab her. She said, Katie, whatever happened to them lily white hands of yarn? They moldered away in the cold clay. Well, by now, Mary was beside herself. She didn't know what to do. She said, Katie, said, Lord, have mercy, honey. What in this world ever happened to that beautiful, beautiful, Diamond ring of yours. You want it? And I guess that Mary gave her her ring back.